Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. see, see. It, it looks something like this. The rail system, the final breakdown. These are the results of two years of procrastination. Hey. Sorry, man, but you really dragged this out. Whatever. The project is finished and is now released to patrons. And you are now going to do a long and detailed breakdown of each single step. Am I right? A long and detailed breakdown. I finally need to let this baby go. Meaning, publish the project files even though I haven't covered them in the long form video yet. This project needs to be out there. If requested, I will do shorter videos on some aspects of it. Isolating principal ideas in shorter videos. But let's finally wrap up the rail system in this one concentrated breakdown. After the first four chapters that you can find here on the channel, there are three additional ones that I have not shown yet. The shaping and creating of towers and bridges, the modeling and moving of the train and gates, and a final chapter regarding the mechanical arms. The whole system is based around the base terrain and that initial curve you draw on it. Changing the one or the other changes the outcome. Object placement, tunnels which in turn change the behavior of the train, and its arms. As you can see, there's quite some ground to cover. So let's rush through the content of the first chapters if you have not seen them. The very basic input into the system is a terrain and a curve. You can make your own or use the one that is done within the system. Before creating more details, we take a first poly version of the terrain and use the curve approximation to split it into areas. One of them smaller for faster processing of more intense operations. The curve itself can be done hastily, so we need to do some work on it. Smoothing it and do some lerp operations create a slope along the rail in relation to the terrain. Here we also add the leaning factor that will make the train lean into a curve. The rail itself can have any form, but in my example it is created with a math formula with some further point manipulation to get the shape that I wanted. Using that shape, you can sweep along the curve and even get UVs for free. Then the slice of terrain checks for the areas that will need a tunnel, so your train doesn't crash into a mountain. But first, that is only the rough placement. All of that is now used to create more detail on the terrain. A mask finds the area that is close to the rail and the surface, but not within reach to a tunnel. That is used to smooth the area, just enough to indicate that some poor workers needed to build something here. The tunnel shape is projected onto the terrain before pushing up the resolution, which will help to embed the final tunnel. Then final detail and erosion is added before we take another polygon version of it. Now we do another approximation to the rail, which gives us the real final pieces that we cut using the tunnel. From the rough tunnel shape, we create a real tunnel and also save the end caps to use for the gates later. Then in the code heavy part of the system, we create the data needed to find out what we can and what we should place at a specific point. The next section is all about modeling the towers and bridges using the already provided data. It has a core loop that is going over each segment, extracting the points where something should happen. The points are processed and the result is merged back into the main loop. First, the bridge is created using parameters from the control node to define the rough shape of it. During the initial processing, the bridge gets its extruded shape, adds some cables at the top and creates attachment slots on each side. These are used to connect with pipes that will appear around bridges, suggesting the support a bridge provides. Each side of the attachment points get isolated with the matching points of the pipe and connected. Some bending and we get an interesting look. But that only covers the bridges. I designed it with the idea that the rail is mainly supported by some kind of tower, possibly connected from both sides. During R&D I quickly noticed that this will look terrible if the tight curves with their more extreme leaning have a tower on both sides. So I built in the option to notice a stronger leaning factor and switch to only one tower. This will always be the lower tower by looking at the normal where the tower models are copied in. For the towers, once I placed the pipe that would be connected to the rail, 
I isolated the tower point and copy my shape on it. The tower itself is a series of procedural modeling operations to create an interesting shape with some small gimmicks to make use of the procedural approach. The key elements are sized through the strength of the current tower point, making a level 3 tower be a lot bigger than a level 1. The tower also generates a random amount of randomly sized antennas and is connected to the ground with a rough shape for a pillar. But the interesting bit was creating a connector that can have a rotation to give each tower a slightly random connection to the ground. The pillar is connected to a platform on the ground that will adopt to the rough shape of the terrain, making it look a bit more embedded. There are additional experimental gimmicks in the project, like creating clouds around the interesting sections and scattering that adopts to the generated mask. Then for the terrain, I needed to build a few assets with procedural modeling, like a door, an engine part, or more complex geometry to kitbash more detail into the train. Creating the train cabin then is a series of more operations to block out a rough shape and then use the primitives of the main hull to create more detailed geometry utilizing the labs node for sci-fi panels. In addition, the setup generates some piping that goes between the two layers of panels. Then the cabin is assembled, combining the sci-fi panels, the doors and a beam underneath. And that's the final object that is placed onto the rail. The wagons have a similar blocking approach to create the frame, but the final model that is later copied behind the cabin comes without the main hull segments. The idea was to have as many wagon variants as you want, so the sci-fi panels for the wagons are created with a PDG setup. A Python script in combination with a modified file node will pick a random wagon skin from a specified folder. The movement of the train has three modes, allowing you to control the position, speed and behavior. You can set the cabin to a fixed position, give it a simple speed per frame or with another mode use a more advanced method that allows you to loop the train's route. This becomes more obvious if you increase the amount of wagons. Then you can see how each wagon starts from the beginning once it reached the end of the rail. The third mode uses a SOP solver that will accelerate or slow down depending on the slope of the rail. Then we have the gates that are at every opening of the tunnels. The idea was to have them open automatically when the train is approaching, but it should also look interesting. I decided to go for a spiral animation. For that I generated points from polar coordinates and used them to fracture the primitive. Then each piece gets its own values at what distance to the train it should move from its location. Now as soon as the train is getting closer, each piece gets activated one after another. The final section was about creating and moving the mechanical arms. Even if you don't need mechanical arms, the approach to make it possible to not only place but also move these arms can be used in a lot of different scenarios. But really, who doesn't need mechanical arms? But first, the arms need to be modeled, so I made a few different versions of plates that I could combine and kitbash. One important piece for this solution was adding additional points that are marked as pivots for the next arm piece. These come in handy when assembling the arm on the wagon. Similar to the towers, the arms are created for each loop iteration of a wagon. So if we look at what goes into this node tree, we see only one wagon, the last iteration of the wagon loop. During the construction, these four primitives were marked as arm hooks. From these I can isolate a point to place the arm base. But since they come from a primitive from the side of the wagon, I can also find a side and up vector to help to orient the copied geometry. Each segment has a pivot point meant for the next piece. This way, while constructing the arm, you can manipulate each point to control the positioning of that arm. Then all pieces are merged together. There are additional points besides the pivots that allow to place a connecting pipe along different arm segments. This supplements the mechanical feel of them. By defining two possible states for each piece, the arm is dynamically transitioning between these states. The controlling factor for this comes through the placed tower points or tunnels. 
When approaching one of them, the transition happens. Further, the arm only regards the towers that are on its own side. So if you have a stronger curve where only single towers are placed, you will notice that only the side towards the tower will change its position. After putting it all together, this gives the train the impression of a giant moving centipede. As I said, who doesn't need that? And this wraps up the rail system. Obviously, there are a lot of small details. Vex and SOP problem solving that go into the individual features. Patrons are now able to download the file and dig into the area they are most interested in. But even if you're not one of them, I invite you to comment down below if you have questions or are interested in one specific detail in this system. Or maybe you just want to say hello. And if you want to catch further content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Cheers.